So, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, coming in. Uh, we should uh, follow up, let's say, the the plan we have on our uh, Google Doc. Firstly, I would like to uh, thank you for being here and for uh, the, your work on, uh, for the first uh, submission. Now uh, we want to focus, a, we have much more time and we want to focus a bit more on uh, on our part of the project, namely on a search engine. So uh, let's start with a short introduction. Everyone uh, is welcome to say a couple of words about himself, herself, um, not necessarily professionally. So if you want to, some, to say something about your wife, husband, pets, kids, whatever, uh, it's also quite human, I would say. Uh, so maybe uh, we start with Brandon. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> My name's Brandon. Uh, I work at Deloitte in Prague uh, at the Czech office, um, and I do I deal mostly with unstructured data analysis. That's anything from natural language processing to time series and anomaly detection, uh, stuff like that. Uh, I uh, primarily in the NLP space. I do like open source intelligence gathering, so I, I'm already doing these like search engines and information retrieval stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm usually happy and uh, fun and ready to help. So that's me. Cool. Uh, thank you. Uh, Imran, your turn. Okay. Yeah. So my name is Imran. Um, actually, funny enough, I work at uh, Accenture, which is another consulting firm. And um, right now I'm pretty, I just kind of graduated like a few years ago. So this is my first job. Um, I like also working on NLP. I primarily work on reinforcement learning, but uh, in this case, uh, NLP is what's needed. So that's what I'm doing. Thank you. Oh, and, and I'm uh, also yeah. very happy most of the time as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, very American, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Slava, your turn, please. Hi guys, uh, my name is Slava and I'm senior data scientist uh, uh, at DANS, uh, an institution from Netherlands and I do all these crazy stuff in Netherlands and uh, in Europe. So I'm involved in NLP projects, I'm also doing structured data apps, I'm doing leading of uh, Dataverse uh, repository development together with Harvard, I'm doing big data, link data, whatever you want. So. If you have questions uh, about infrastructure, basically, uh, this is what I'm doing all the time. And as a guy who is uh, in the middle between innovation and uh, research and development, I can assist you how to get stuff from research actually to production. Cool. So thank you. Anton, you're next. Anton P. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, no. Hey, hello everyone. My name is Anton. I'm originally from Ukraine. I have applied math and computer science background. Uh, I did PhD in computer science in University of California, Riverside. It's in Southern California. Right now, uh, I moved to Bay Area. I live here for what, almost four years now. And I'm like a serial entrepreneur. Usually I'm kind of like a tech, tech person, first engineer, founding tech engineer, yada, yada. So my focus is again AI ML, not NLP, but I joined CoronaWire early on just to kind of like, you know what? I want to train Bert on that uh, like data set. I have no idea, like I, I know Bert is super big, etc., And it's probably a dumb idea to do it from scratch, but this is my moonshot idea. So, and I'm just trying to get closer and closer to that action. Uh, and for CoronaWire, I, I usually like, what I'm trying to do is from the shares, I'm talking with people and trying to kind of make sure that our org from the top could actually capture those people, etc. And that's why I got super interested when I discovered that, oh my God, we have a pocket of tech people who are currently for whatever reason think that like, oh my God, we're not part of the submission. What are we do here? What, you know, what's going on? So uh, don't worry, I think for round two, 
what we start today is essentially will be like that foundation for the rest of the teams to expand even more. So, so far, right, what we did, we had uh, all of this, like these joint pieces. I think right now we have like already two search engine in parallel, right, or something like this. Multiple elastic search clusters already spun up, etc. So now it's the time to kind of consolidate all of this. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, that's great. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, Guilherme Blanco, your next, please. It's, I, I pronounce it rightly, your name? Um, sort of. <laughs> it's more like Guillermo. Guillermo. Blanco. Guillermo, yes. Guillermo. Hi. Hello, guys. Well, I'll start the camera. Okay. <laughs> now it's perfect. Um, well, I have um, a computer science background, and now I'm doing a PhD in natural language processing. And I think I have some back, uh, back-end programming uh, experience. I worked in a in a startup for three years, and right now I'm starting with natural language processing and machine learning, and, and I'm usually also very happy. <laughs> okay, I think that is all. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Justin. You're next. What's up, happy guys? Um, I am a primarily a front end engineer at a startup in Minneapolis, Minnesota, in the U.S. I work mostly with React, Next.js. Um, because we are a small startup, I do some backend stuff too and handle all of our DevOps flow. So uh, when it comes to machine learning AI, I, that's probably, it's, it's, it's like a big interest of mine. So I'm happy to be in a conversation with all of you guys, but I know very little um, about it, but maybe that's okay for the focus of uh, my role in the search engine. Great. Um, Thanks a lot. Uh, the next person would be Don Sosa. Yes, that's correct, how I pronounce it? Or yeah, I'm Dan, Dan, hey. Dan, okay. Dan. Yeah, um, I joined late. Uh, what, what's going on? Are we just introducing uh, ourselves? Just, yeah, just still as an introduction around. Okay, uh, hi guys, I'm Dan. I'm a fellow Minnesotan, although I'm in the West Coast now. Yeah, shut up. Um, I'm leading the, the task VT team, so we're answering what do we know about vaccines and therapeutics. Um, I'm just listening in because I'm interested in like such a search engine that you guys are working on right now. Uh, my background is in, I, I'm a researcher in biomedical informatics, specialty is in pharmacology, NLP and meta research. Um, yeah, just happy to be here. Okay, great, great having you here. Okay, thanks. Uh, the next person would be Alex Walter. Alex. Hey guys, hey, hi everyone. I'm Alex, uh, I'm based in London. Um, data science lead a computer vision startup at the moment, but we also do NLP, so kind of like a mixed machine learning background. So my PhD had a lot of machine learning in it and then kind of transitioned into data science and data engineering as well. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's about it. So actually, like super excited that there's so many people that want to work on this and uh, on so many cool things as well. So it's, it's going to be fun, I'm sure. That, that'd be me, I think. Okay. Thanks a lot. And I think the last person would be uh, Christine. Christine. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I look like a bummer right now, but whatever. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know if you can... Uh, anyway, I'm originally from Taiwan and currently based in uh, Los Angeles on the west side. Um, so, I, I study medicine, and but I decided to switch uh, my career into more of like data science space. Um, so I'm currently finishing up my PhD uh, program in public policy. My research is in actually misinformation detection, um, especially about, my topic is about vaccinations actually. Um, so I'm also I'm leading the um, team, TIES, Currently, um, and we did, you know, use uh, a search engine. So happy to see what we're continuing to build here. And nice to meet you guys. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, okay, uh, have I missed somebody? Okay, no, I think it's everyone. I think we will get some few people join just 
in a couple of moments but we could probably proceed and then we'll just yeah, yeah i mean like yeah i mean that's because otherwise it will uh take forever um so uh, according to our uh google doc um okay introduction is done and now about a bit about motivation for each team member i think it's uh yeah motivation as such it's quite obvious why we are doing it uh, but um, yeah, I mean, like, would you, would we like to talk about our motivation? It's or it's um, obvious. I think we've yeah, pretty much. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, we just like to just get into it now. Yeah, I mean, like it's obvious. I mean, like there are different uh, types of motivation, but I think it's more or less obvious in this case. Uh, uh, what are we building uh, and for what purpose? Um, what a kind of information uh, should be retrieved? What a kind of input is expected from user? What kind of guidance can be provided to the user? What Lego pieces we already have on the table? Um, uh, sorry, just before we get to that, I want to just clarify something because yeah. um, Originally, I think like there's like a two people that this is made for, right? This is made for internally as in for all the other teams to use in their respective projects when querying, but we're also making something that's yeah. going to be public facing, right? Yeah, sure. I mean, it would be one of, one of the points that namely we are doing that for the cargo submission for the cargo notebooks or it's it's doing uh, it's it's being done uh, for some external pur purposes for the world because uh, it, it requires also a completely different approach in terms of uh, what the kind of software we are using uh, because Kaggle notebook is quite limited in terms of resources, in terms of things we can use. And uh, we are, when we're doing a really an external kind of database with a search engine, then it's a completely different story. So I think it's one of the points we should discuss at least, and we should start this discussion at least now. And I think uh, it would be twofold in the sense that we're going to uh, for, for cargo submission and for uh, some external uh, web page or, or external database. It's right or? Yeah, I would say that's essentially um, right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, um, I would say for now, like even without, because the front end is mainly meant for the public facing research tool, right? Yep. Um, so, I mean, we could at least go ahead and provide an API. Is it? I'm not sure what the Kaggle submission rules. Is it possible to kind of query from M and API and just get the results when you guys are submitting? It's a good question. Dan, Christine, I, do you I, think, I think all of this public like available to all the people, then it's fine because they do say you can use That's whatever data sets, but it That's needs to be public. That's right. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Actually, I think like what we start doing here, it's already beyond Kaggle. So don't be limited by the Kaggle box. All of mm -hmm. this essentially, yeah, where this is actually our product. What CoronaWire is about. Like everybody, like we kind of skip this, what is motivation here, which is, again, I guess for tech people, it's kind of obvious, but it actually is not, right? And at this point, for me, it's clear that it's already beyond Kaggle. And doing first submission, all of us will participate in those submissions somehow, right? And kind of realizing, like, oh my God, this, this should be done. And this is not for Kaggle. This is like, for everybody should have like a search tool, uh, an sure. index tool or something like this. So please don't be limited by, by Kaggle or anything. This is just like, we, we still need to find who will use this, right? But we already got this conversation with medical experts, et cetera. So in terms of who we imagine will use our external tool and internal tool as well, there'll be like those like medical professionals or, you know, people yeah. who actually know what they're doing with the data. Our job is just to simply, okay, we have a raw data on the left of us and to the right, we need to 
have consumable data for like not tech people, not necessarily APIs, but for you know real like professionals in the field. I yeah, think that's right. my question. To that point, I do, I do have a question like that has been around for a while. So okay. it's like if our audience, like main users are the medical okay. uh, community, like what are we actually providing? Like, because there are already a lot of very good medical or biomedical databases out there. And okay. like the most researchers, they don't really get data in the JSON or things like, like that kind of format. Like, what are like are we really creating another search engine like those are so already? I, like, I have a, a note on that. Uh, sorry for jumping in, but this is very very important topic. I had a call with a, a guy who is a CEO of a company, and they they sell it for like millions of dollars to various like healthcare companies or, or whatever. And it is essentially search engine with relationships and things like that. And mm -hmm. basically his his piece of advice given you know his limited knowledge to what we're creating was hey i've already spent you know hundreds of millions on do of dollars building this tool uh, first of all don't even try to build it because of how complex it is but also like be mindful of you know like how hard it is to create it without the you know proper infrastructure and integrations so it really becomes a question are we trying to create a search engine for medical professionals, which I think is very, very hard, or we're creating new type of search engines and knowledge synthesis uh, methodologies that are actually applicable and can be used by all of these doctor evidence uh, search platforms and others, I which I think question. we're, that's the second one that we should be doing. Can I ask you something? Why you called it a uh, search engine? I'm building search yeah. engine for almost 20 years and what we are discussing now is not search engine at all. Yeah. No yeah. And that's because we don't have a word to describe <laughs> it. Maybe you have a better one, but in our head, you know, Google kind of serves the same thing in a way. And that's the, f the closest concept that is being activated by our, you know, system <laughs> one that, that resonates to it. I mean, for me, I feel like there's more than just search. It's also validation that the, the information is up to date. It is accurate. It's relevant. So I'm not sure those, I'm sure those medical search tools take that into account. In fact, there is a tool called up to date. My wife, uh, she's a medical professional. She uses up to date. Um, it's not clean at all. And it's, it's still kind of hard to find things. Um, but like, yeah. Th thoughts on, on that at all? Yeah, I think the, the up-to-date aspect is very important, but also the concept of data sharing and data infrastructure behind it is super important because the, the real reason why no one has built something like this is because there is not enough, first, open infrastructure to support all kinds of uh, cross-pollinations of data. There are all these silos that are you know, protected by you know, big uh, pharmaceutical companies and others. And such things exist across different industries. It's not just uh, pharmacology. It's not just healthcare. It exists across different uh, verticals. And it's actually something that has potential to be disrupted during the, the current timing. I would also add that um, we, we ha we're positioned uniquely to be able to answer questions on a particular topic. So like these medical search engines or information retrieval systems are general purpose. They don't just focus on one virus or one protein or, or one topic. Um, they're really, really huge. Um, and the, the challenges that they would face in information retrieval in that type of environment are, are a little bit different than us where, um, you know, 40,000 documents is very manageable. If they're doing 100 million documents, which is completely within the realm of possibility, that's a totally different uh, question. So the things that you can do at, at the scale of uh, tens of thousands of documents you cannot do at the scale of hundreds of millions of documents um, and because of that and because we are not limited by corporate structure or um, uh, weird bureaucracy um, we're able to develop really quickly and uh, like be very specific and targeted in the way that we um, make this information available to people who care about it or at least that's the way that I see it yeah I, I agree with that um, one thing 
I would just kind of like, I think what help clarify is um, kind of like a story in terms of how is someone going to use this, right? Because as Slava was saying too, like this is not really a search engine. And um, also for myself, I was kind of like, oh, Google search engine, right? But that is probably not the case as you guys are talking about. So like this is meant for researchers. Am I, is it, does everyone agree with that? That this is meant for like researchers mm -hmm. who are researching the coronavirus. Yeah, and maybe it will be helpful for you guys. Uh, we have that interview on our website with the epidemiologist who's not actually like a medical medical professional. He is a researcher, the person who synthesizes knowledge. And he basically told me the, that the value proposition of what you guys are building without realizing what you're building is basically what I've been doing for two months can be synthesized into just a couple of days. And not only the time frame, but also validation if I should be doing it at all. And that's yeah. really the, the value prop. Okay. I think okay. it's good to, to actually come up with some user stories, maybe just to put them down so we can start thinking about them. And yeah, after the zone is one while we're building. Whatever we're gonna do. We have a call with this guy, epidemiologist, tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. or one. Uh, I'll I'll create a, a calendar invite for that. And the purpose of that call is exactly that: uh, understanding what is the product and trying to reverse engineer from there. Okay. Um, okay. And can I also tell about concept of like we we, we already discussed in the search engine? But I, I really believe it's, this is not search engine because we are going to discover some uh, hidden relationships between uh, some entities. Exactly. So it's rather a kind of a, um, a tool to discover knowledge, not only just to search for knowledge, but like to build knowledge. No, 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 to, to extract new knowledge from uh, already no, known um, things. Yeah. yeah, that's actually like a good analogy. Data tool or? That's a good analogy because, you know, Google, you've, you are searching for a specific thing that you know exists, but you need more information about it. Here, you're actually searching for something you don't know exists and it's not really searching. Yeah. Okay, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, fu 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 funny remark. If you guys look at the Google Doc that we are following over here right <laughs> okay. um, do we have Vyacheslav on the call now so Vyacheslav he kind of already kind of pointed that question right looks like a knowledge base or something ah so, yeah so it's kind of funny that we're now discussing this more <clears throat> okay uh, can, you, um, can you guys fill me in a little bit about the background of this project and because I'm just jumping in here and I don't have any context so this looks like no one has <laughs> <laughs> We try to take over the world, something like that, <laughs> more or less. Because was Damn, the original dude. idea a search engine, or was it like, or are you trying to make like a knowledge graph and do like knowledge inference? Basically, from the knowledge then, graph, like or? what you guys did for vaccines and treatments task, we want to build something that helps you do that in one day. Um, uh, okay, I mean, we just need to like. I would just need to understand like use cases and like you know like yeah and part of the reason and that I that I that I wanted to push this in the first place was because I was getting a lot of requests from Maya and her team of um, look we're coming up with all of these keywords but we don't know if they're correct or not and we're getting uh, feedback from medical professionals but we really need to be able to look at the data and understand whether or not uh, what we're creating is valid um, and mm -hmm. because there is no uh, Mm, because there's no like easy to use way of validating uh, whatever information other than like searching through your pandas data frame for particular substrings or something at the moment um, it's really difficult to do that so they, they were on keywords for at least two weeks um, and I think if we're going to be going to round two with people uh, at least on the Kaggle side if people are going in on the Kaggle side looking for um, answers to questions that are being listed um, they should be able to find that within minutes rather than having to develop entire ontologies uh, that filter the exact correct uh, documents that they need and clustering and, and 55 people doing TFIDF and 
Um, like having all of this in one place that's publicly facing that it gives you immediate results um, and not just immediate results, but state of the art results, I, I think uh, will save people a lot of time, at least on the Kaggle side. On the yeah. medical professional side, it, like they're not working with Pandas data frames, right? They're working with um, just, they want to know exactly what is in the literature, what's related to what they want to know, and uh, they're only interested in finding it immediately. Um, so like Christine said, I'm sure that these, these systems already exist for um, other, uh, in like other medical circles um, and for other literature are, but you know, we're, we're very focused on this like COVID literature stuff. So um, yeah, I think that's all I had to say about that. Okay. Yeah. So for like me and my team's use case, I'm just interested in expanding essentially instead of doing, cause we were doing keyword searches for round one, but like, instead of, uh, I'm thinking of new projects related to vaccines. Um, and so I want to start with just vaccines or immunogenicity, immunogenicity, and just like expand those concepts. So it's, it sounds like rather than just doing a simple keyword search, I just want like a word to vec and like, you know, an automatically expanded vocabulary. And that seems like a relatively simple thing to implement, but that that's not like as, it sounds like what you guys are envisioning is, is even much beyond that. And I'm not sure exactly what that end state looks like, but that, that's all that I was curious about initially with my ask. Yeah. So one of the, one of the advantages of using Elasticsearch or um, something like a BM25 index in the back end is that uh, you're not just looking for the keywords, but also things that are related to it in the context. So um, the relative importance of words to particular documents. So if you find something that's really important in one document, you also know based on the relationship of that document to other documents, what the most important terms are. Um, and that can either inform or, uh, or enhance your decision to include or disinclude uh, keywords if you're gonna do a full text search or something. But mm -hmm. in theory, this would preclude the, the need to do uh, keyword ontology development entirely if you already know what you're looking for and can, right. and can put it into one sentence, yeah. And I assume that that BM25 functionality is more than just like PubMed queries can simply provide right now? As far as I know, I'm, I'm actually not sure what PubMed does, uh, but I, I don't know if it does anything better than just keyword search. Right, I'm not sure there, either. Cause, there's yeah. something like mesh terms. So they, they do kind of similar things. They just chunk together a lot of uh, synonyms, related words into a big mesh term and they actually search that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of, it's, I guess it's kind of similar, yeah. That, that's, yeah, so maybe like some kind of contextualized like distributional semantics, word to vec stuff, BM25, like that's already an improved functionality on the basic like PubMed uh, querying. So maybe that's that's the direction to go for. But, but then we're back even more advanced. To, sorry, but then we're back to querying, right? This is search again, at least that's how it sounds to me, which sounds very different to what Slava, for instance, had in mind. Yeah, and that's why I'm just curious, like, what the end vision is, and I'm just, you know, getting yeah, up to speed right now. No, exactly. I'm not saying it's, it's not valid. I'm just saying there's so many different ideas, and, like, just bringing them together and consolidating what do we actually want to do yeah. is, is gotcha. tricky, right? That's a valid question. I, I had, like, an hour-long discussion with Mike, uh, no, not Mike, honey, uh, Steve Godfrey yesterday, and uh, I was having a difficult time uh, convincing him that this was something that needed to be done. Uh, so. I, th I think what we really need to do is, is collect those user stories. What exactly are we trying to deliver on? Like, yeah. I, I know, I know deep down because of how many requests I've had to like, search through the data, find me these sentences, find me these sections. Like, I know that people need this, but uh, there, there are so many different people with different needs. And, and I think that it would be useful to collect those needs and uh, really hone in on what we should deliver on and then and go for it full speed. Maybe it's a matter of sending out a survey and saying like, okay, if we were to develop like the best search engine for you guys to help with your projects right now, like what would, what kind of features would you like? And then you can get all those ideas automatically. And that's like before thinking of medical use cases, because I think that's a whole can of worms that I don't know if is like, Quick note, immediate. like we shouldn't <laughs> use surveys. We should always jump on a call with these people and organically like extract that because that's the only thing that, that works in the current environment. Everyone is it. Everyone hates text, documents, or anything. Yeah. Can I make one, one important remark? Uh, I think that uh, this kind of crisis is not first one and not last one. So it would be nice not to start with some medical uh, databases, but probably uh, you could use a knowledge graph that already available by Wikipedia. So I think it's good starting point to make uh, this kind of 
solution generic, more generic for other girls also. Right. Okay. Just, just a quick note on the, the survey. Again, I think it's true that we can garner a lot of feedback, um, either through calls or, or surveys. And I agree that calls are preferred. But what we shouldn't forget is that we are actually the experts, right? So and there, there's many things that people might want to have, but they have no idea that it exists, right? Or that, that it can actually be built. So this has, this has to be two track, I guess, right? We need to validate against what people uh, want, like medical professionals, but also bring our own ideas in of what's actually possible. And then they might be amazed. They might be, oh, wow, this is super cool. I didn't know this was possible at all. But this is exactly yeah. what we need. Yeah, I know it's a combination of like a Steve Jobs approach plus like collecting user stories. So I'm advocating for just collecting user stories in addition to the full picture. Yep. Okay, so maybe when we have now a general idea what, in which direction we are going, uh, can we skip over to the next point? Because uh, already it's uh, more than half hour and we're still in point number two of our uh, agenda. And there is something like eight points. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think we'll uh, make through the whole list, Lukas. Yeah. Like, this is uh, the plan for like, <laughs> for the whole ordeal right now. Yeah, yeah, I've been there after. Right? <laughs> this is like, this is probably the most important thing, right? Like, we got to know what we're doing before we yeah, actually sure. make it, right? Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, because the next point would be uh, what is our input and in what format. So I think it's also important in the sense that we need to think what the kind of, uh, yeah, actually it's related to uh, what we are already uh, discussed, namely uh, how the user puts in uh, his, her request or search query or what the user is supposed to do with our tool. It would be super useful to have some kind of wizard because uh, the, th the thing about information retrieval systems is that you have to know how to do it. And I'm looking just for example at this Vespa.ai thing, the Cord19 Vespa AI. The results look really good, but I have no idea what these plus signs mean. And when I take the plus signs out of the search, I assume that it's like a filter or yeah. like it must it must be in, in, the, in the search or something. Uh, then I get different results. So um, like if we have a wizard for people who are either calling it as an API or they're going to the website and they're looking for some, something specific and it asks them, what are you looking for? Are you looking for this, 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 this? Um, okay, in this case, you want to use this index. Okay, now what kind of idea are you looking for? Put it in a simple sentence, uh, something like that. Okay, yep. That, that's, that sounds reasonable. Because the type of input that will get them good results is going to depend on what they're looking for and whether or not it's document level or because they're only interested in papers or if it's sentence level or yeah. level, section or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's another story how we split our data. It's like on which level we were going to work. The whole in, entire documents or just sections or, or sentences because there was already for the submission one, uh, the whole story about uh, sections like results and methods that were, that were very important for two of our teams. And we had problems to extract actually all uh, results and methods, uh, chapters or sections from all papers. So it's, yeah. Um, guys, I just, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yep. Uh, okay, yeah, sorry, disconnected for a bit. Um, I just wanted to also add that like probably like the first action item that would be helpful. Um, is to actually sketch out like a wireframe of how we expect this to look and Brandon if you could like add those and like add those queries like example queries and what we would expect um, sure. basically have like a like a user story of what it would look like then you could at least know what's going on mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah still, I'm also, yeah what personally I don't understand so we are talking about business model now <laughs> if it's B2C or B2B, uh, I, I see it should be B2B and not B2C, to be honest. Uh, for example, I already said about Wikipedia. So if we'll manage to get technology at some point, uh, more or less operational, so all these charts, nice, nice charts in Wikipedia, we can make, say, alive or interactive. And I think you can build any web 
interface if you have this kind of technology already. So why should we concentrate, we should concentrate on uh, B2C right now to figure out what actually user needs. We can mm -hmm. think about some kind of interfaces, how to attract all people that do, uh, doing something with data science, some kind of research, and they'll figure out what to build and how to create a web interface to access this data. This is my point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it makes it makes sense. Like if we observe what we've done so far, right, for submission, which again follows very similar, just like kind of a toy example of you know bigger society. We had all of this like internal teams, and then we have dedicated visualization team that was essentially wrapping all of that data into something more deliverable, right? So in a sense, I think we should follow the same process over here. Our first goal essentially to build some of this backend system. Right, and then when we got some nice end, like backend engine, we could start experimenting with whatever format is, whatever. Uh, I don't like again. We still not. We don't know exactly who is our user, right? That again, Christine was asking this question, like, what are we actually, you know, type of like, what type of people we're actually addressing, and I think this is the we get to discover that. But uh, our user is quite clear. I think it's White House. <laughs> well, I, mean, I actually like, agree. This White House will be enough oh, yeah. with just like text. <laughs> yeah, right? and here's the thing. Well, actually, and, there are a lot of researchers working for the White House. So yeah, here's the thing. Like, it's proud. Like it's it's a complex multivariable ecosystem, right? And you, Slava, you come from the uh, startup world, and it's easier for you to synthesize these you know, second order relationships and he, you know, the White House there as the end uh, user. And I fully agree. But the thing is that there are multiple kind of layers to, to the users. And obviously it has to make sense to a regular epidemiologist that is just a consultant that works for the, the White House Office of Technology. So it, we have to consider all of these things together in the same way as we package the Kaggle notebooks for kind of everyone, but with a specific angle to, to make it approachable for epidemiologists or other personas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would say the, the fastest track from here to a deliverable is, is focusing on one use case and then expanding from there. So I, I think it, it would be really useful for us to have a discussion about really defining what our first use case should be and then how to make it to that uh, like minimum viable product in business terms uh, in, in the fastest way possible and then add on bells and whistles from there. But I think it's it's really easy task. We have almost, I think, 1,000 people. And those people, they want to do something. So we, we have to actually to provide some basic infrastructure, like search engine or knowledge graph or whatever. So people can query, they can put something on map, or they can do something in their notebook. And basically, this is how we, we can force them to create new things. And they'll come to us, and they'll tell us, what they need actually. <laughs> um, so one, one thing that I just wanted to mention is that there's a library for pandas working with Elasticsearch. I think it's called Pandastic Search or something. And you're able to, if, if the Elasticsearch instance is public facing, they don't even need to go to the website for this. They can just make an API call with uh, data frame equals uh, pandas read the, the Elasticsearch instance and they can aggregate by different fields. They can do full text searches and stuff like this using all pandas uh, API calls. Um, so I, I think at least that will be super useful for the Kaggle community um, without even need, needing to take into account uh, the, the actual front end. I also think so, yeah. We should really engage people to do something. Something simple, so we can even start with some, some kind of cookbook. So people can try, they can easily understand well, what we actually we are doing and uh, they will get some ideas how to help. I okay. think we should... I think we should focus in one say that Brandon was saying about the 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 app data. I think the most value part, the most valuable part of the search engine could be to deliver process data. Like we, one clear use case among all groups is uh, using in note in Kaggle notebooks and in local computers, use and reach data over 
the code the COVID data set. So, for example, if we if random process a data set version seven and provide us with lots of embeddings, it could be great, for example, for the search engine for people to be able to query those those embeddings because it's going it's always going to be faster than having it locally. So, at least a, a first use case could be to have uh, some kind of publicly available place where process data can be delivered in an easy way, like uh, a request in Python on, or Pandas Elasticsearch or it's also going to make my work life a lot easier because most of the issues that have come up in the past like three weeks have been I can't load this pickle in in Kaggle or I, I can't find this data set because someone deleted it or it's too big and it won't fit in memory and it's crashing my Kaggle notebook. So um, if it's if it's already on this other server, like basically you guys are already saving my life. So uh, we've already made enough progress that I'm happy. <laughs> so. Okay, so. With regards to what we already have in terms of the um, Elasticsearch is already up and running, right? Uh, we just need to, and I think I saw the, and the API was available, right? So we already have the first use case more or less resolved. Yes, uh-huh. Okay, cool. So, and then we could just tack on that semantic search yeah. for getting those tricky articles. And... I guess that's the first iteration we have. Yeah. Um, well, when you put it like that. <laughs> well, uh, it's basically, uh, it's pretty simple. It's just uh, Elasticsearch deployed on. Still, uh, it's nice starting point, but uh, we, we really need to think about how to keep relations because between entities. For example, Brandon uh, already extracted a lot of things like uh, named entities, like drugs and uh, whatever, proteins. So now we, we have to think about new components, how to keep those relations between uh, all these things and mm -hmm. uh, to make everything available for people for further research. So, so I think... Yeah. Sorry, Arvin. I'm just saying like so it sounds like the first thing that we might want to do is uh make like each groups or info like uh information from the from the papers more accessible to people. Like if you wanna just look at the name entities, if you wanna just look at any parts of the the um the articles, I should be able to get that in a Kind of structure, clean formats, and I can use that immediately without. Uh, I can kind of pull them together, do things with different mod like different parts of the the papers, without having to do a lot of preprocessing and stuff. I think uh, papers, it's, uh, well, collection itself is not. Of course, it's important, but the most important thing, uh, how we are going to uh, process all these relations that we found between diseases and symptoms and this kind of stuff. So I think it would be nice to, to create kind of index like, like in book, in, in any medical book, you can find index in the end. So this index actually can show what actually we extracted at first uh, uh, phase. But this is just my opinion. Cool. Uh, so, should we continue with the this document, or uh, it, it's running pretty long, I guess, for some people? So, uh, is everybody okay continuing, or do we want to schedule like a, another call, maybe tomorrow, to to continue discussing? I actually think we're definitely like in terms of continuing the list. We like it's probably a good idea to get to the second call because right now we kind of get a lot of info to send in just to kind of, you know to wrap our heads around it. The only one question is still left for me personally is this, uh, what, what elastic search like specific server are we talking about? Because so far I know Slava set up one, Brandon, you had one, and then uh, somebody else was reaching out to me. So are we all in sync about what elastic cluster we're talking this about? This is the one that's been deployed by Slava. So first okay. of all, thank you so Slava, yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so at this point, like we basically I deployed they, service and I've got all indexes from Brandon already uh, imported 
So this is just the mm -hmm. same solution. Right, okay, so this is Brandon and Slava are in sync. Uh, exactly. Other people yeah. with Elasticsearch initiatives who reach out to me are also in sync with that? Or there is still something else to scan it? No, I'm no. I mean, I set up a quick POC, but I think the, I definitely want to put this on Kubernetes anyways. So we should just use the one that's already on, on Kubernetes, I think. Okay, so that thing is covered. Uh, can people, like, so there were already another, like, two things that I'm trying to kind of figure out, like, first day is, there were already two search engine discussion in the, in the, in the Slack channel, right? And people kind of like, oh, we will launch, like, those guys will launch faster, but you know we're we're still trailing ahead, etc. So, can those people speak up and just tell us what they have already, so we could also use that as those Lego pieces to? Anton, to I think that we talked uh, in in the Slack channel. We talk uh, a bit more about semantic search. I mean, like because I mentioned also uh, whoosh because I would uh, I used whoosh. And it's a kind of uh, elastic search, but pure uh, written purely in Python. But and it would be useful maybe for uh, for Kaggle submissions because it's a Python based. But for the let's say this external project, of course, is that was uh, is already done by Slava. It's I think it's a good direction. Uh, another question was uh, or point was actually uh, the semantic search. So it's a, a different kettle of fish and uh, something that is already, I think, employed uh, to some extent by Imran, namely a face. And I think that I'm working on is uh, Enoy, is a library by Spotify. It's, it's similar in the sense that the, as input you, you get a uh, you get uh, embeddings, vectors, uh, either from sentences or uh, entire documents, and you 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 run a kind of a, a nearest a neighbor search uh, for documents that are in terms of vectors uh, nearest neighbors to each other, something like that. So. Uh, Generally speaking, it, that, that was the, and of course now it's the, we, we should open the whole discussion about caveats of both methods. What is the faster? Uh, what the kind of vectors we are using from uh, Spacey or from a uh, BERT model when BERT then which kind of BERT? Uh, that was also uh, my proposal. I put it in the uh, Google Doc. Namely, uh, we can combine vectors from a different uh, granularity. Uh, levels like uh, let's say we have a, a sentence vector, but this sentence is always in a certain chapter in a, cert a certain uh, uh, document. So you can combine always a ve uh, to each sentence also a chapter and uh, document vector. So the vector is tw twice or, or three times longer, but then you have uh, the whole context, uh, let's say knowledge or context, uh, semantic context uh, from vectors of the higher level, things like that. So it's like, I think it's another uh, long discussion. How, how what the kind of vectors we retrieve from, from the database and then how we process, uh, process it and how fast, because it's also important. I, th I think uh, we can deploy also another search engine. And why? Because we don't know well, what they are looking for. So let's uh, keep all these pieces infrastructure together and we will start to use it and we will see how people will react and what will actually will survive and will, what will work better. So but please provide all the links to me and I will take a look how to deploy it on Kubernetes. And let's start thinking about again the naming because we already were like arguing, is it the search engine or not? And if we will launch like two search engines that are not exactly search engines, that will be a disaster. So let us all like, think and propose some good name like what, that captures the essence of, of each this kind of more specific, uh, kind of more of internal engine, I guess, right? And the other one, this public facing like query engine or something. Uh, well, I would say it's not search engine uh, on, well, it's just infrastructure. It's common infrastructure. Right. This is how it's, co it's called in all uh, research projects in Europe. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay we'll so, figure it out, uh, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Slava, 
Hello? Yeah, so, Slava, so we have the uh, Git repo. So just also to make sure all the codes in one place, um, is the Elasticsearch, is all that code in the uh, Git repo as well? Sorry, uh, can you repeat the question? Yeah, sorry. So um, for the common repository for all our codes, like the yeah. semantic search and Elastic, yeah. um, is there Elastic components in the GitHub? But the thing is, well, uh, <laughs> Elastic is, is just open source solution with some commercial components, but, but still oh, okay. it's open. Yeah, we don't have any problems with it. Mm. Okay, sorry. I, you know what? Honestly, I, I've never used Elasticsearch, so that's my bad. Oh, no, no, you will like it. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay. I guess the, the <laughs> really question great, is, yeah. are there, like, where are the configs for that deployment, etc.? That's, yeah. I guess, the question exactly. Iman was asking. Like, so yeah, can he run like it on, on your own, right? That's kind of your question. Like, can you, like, clone the repo, run it locally or something just to try it out to see how it works, etc., right? That's right. The yeah. config ah, files okay. can be can be condensed into like a Docker Compose file, um, yeah. and that can be stored in, in the GitHub repository. The data itself would need to be stored somewhere else, probably like on a Google bucket or something. But yeah. as long as there is that configuration information in a in a just YML file for the Docker Compose, in theory, it's it's movable. Anybody can reproduce it. So, yeah, I, I can tell you even more secret information basically something deployed on, on kubernetes and on your computer is coming from the same uh, docker <laughs> from docker hub <laughs> nice um for the semantic search part <laughs> yep the um face does not actually store the uh sentences themselves it just and you can't even actually get the vector so if we were to publish something, we still need to have like a database. I remember someone mentioned that Elasticsearch already stores. I think Brandon, you were saying. Mm -hmm. So Elasticsearch actually does store the documents. It also stores their ID. So as long as you're querying by, or whenever you're doing this vector search in face, if you get back these uh, document IDs or sentence IDs or whatever, you just yeah. uh, feed that into the Elasticsearch instance. And if you're doing the same kind of search on, I want the similarity of this, this query, you get a, um, the list of documents back with a score uh, listed by their uh, IDs on Elasticsearch. And if you also have a score listed by ID in the face index, um, you just merge those two tables essentially and then assign a weight to each one of the scores so that it averages out somehow. And um, yeah, so th that shouldn't be an issue. The like data, Elasticsearch itself is a database. Um, uh, it's not like a SQL database, but is the database nonetheless so yeah but, but I, I still believe that Elasticsearch is not proper solution for storage and for aggregations uh, probably MongoDB or another NoSQL uh, database should fit in this you probably know more about that than I do so I might <laughs> ask you to do that part <laughs> well Mongo, MongoDB is uh, basically market leader so I, I think they do great stuff anyways okay gotcha. um, Slava would you be able to uh, uh, prepare that yeah, I, I will just uh, build new cluster with MongoDB and uh, will offer us a new service. <laughs> ah, it's no problem. It'll be done tomorrow. <laughs> no, seriously, it can be done tomorrow. <laughs> no, guys, let, let me give you a context. Oh, it's been so, weeks. <laughs> I, I, I spoke with Slava first time, what is what, like Monday or Tuesday? And like, in the two days or something, we already got all of the infrastructure up and running. So <laughs> when he's saying like, yeah, I'll just like run it out and tomorrow oh, but morning. Guys, I'm, like, I'm working in the five, work. five, uh, five European projects. I'm doing the same. I'm basically responsible for this infrastructure everywhere. So I know how to install it and how to maintain it, really. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of this project, we're gonna, all going to have posters of you like up on our walls. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh yeah, and Slava, the uh, Docker Compose, if you want to put it up in uh, your... I already have it. So first okay. I started to, after we, we discussed uh, with Anton, uh, so I started actually to do prototyping of uh, kind of distributed and local notebooks. So I already created a local infrastructure that has MongoDB and uh, um, Elasticsearch and uh, Jupyter Notebook F is integrated and actually connected to a, a bucket so and Google Drive. So basically it works as one system 
and you can publish something on Google Drive, and in the same time, you, you can do computations on your own laptop after some time. So related question then is, uh, are we going to run out of funds at some point? What what are the, what are our resources here? Is this based on Anton's uh, Google credits or? So it's it's not mine. It's org credits. Uh, but yeah, like the Elastic Cluster, all of that is is deployed there. Uh, so far, like the I mean, we're not doing much there, like except what Slava, you just put data and just some reindexing or something. So the burn rate is like ridiculously small at this point. But the moment we'll start using then we will see actual load. Mm -hmm. But, but the no, plan nobody is, is using that. Yeah, no, so like right now it's just all like dollar or something a day or something. But the plan is I like the way I see it is we we try to do everything right and in terms of all of this cloud infrastructure we just moonshot in everything we do everything like immediately prepare for a big load be ready for high burn rate because the moment we will get that burn rate like this will be the basis for us to simply go and to the same door of google saying like okay guys we used your five grand credits and here is what we've built like we need more and we'll just scale so at least that's how i see that approach going uh, if not, we always scale, scale down and then just again have it like something slow. But right now, like we we shouldn't be worrying about like infrastructure, like those infrastructure costs. We will take care of later. Right now, I think we we go have good setup. Okay, that makes me feel slightly better. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, anyway, I already started built uh, next to cloud infrastructure with local infrastructure. So the idea that people will start to run things locally. And if, we'll, if they will succeed at some point, they can use our cloud solution. So it's kind of a prevention, prevention step before we'll burn all credits. Magic. OK, we love you. <laughs> yeah. um, OK, so it's been a little bit over an hour now. Uh, I, I think we should probably wrap up um, uh, and maybe schedule for another call to, to discuss other points. Does anybody disagree? Um, no, so I just want to follow up. Um, so are we still going to try to collect some use cases from the teams so we have better idea what we are actually want, want to deliver? Does anybody want to volunteer for collecting user stories? <laughs> um, because I, I, the only thing that I can do is really base it off of what, what we've done in the past month. Um, I can ask a couple of people in like VT or in ties, but um, I'm not sure. So um, tomorrow uh, there is a call with VT team. Like, is Dan on call or he's already left? <laughs> Dan, are you here? Oh, okay. So tomorrow, I think 11 a.m., we will have a call with like, I don't know who participates in that call, but the the topic is VT team and what is like, what is like technical questions moving forward in terms of, again, uh, I don't know, from GitHub repos organizing to, again, what will be like the next steps. So if somebody wants to join to listen as well, probably it will be a good idea to do, will be an example of that user story. Is that the call that Arthur mentioned? Or is that a different call? Because I, I have no idea what, like which call is what. <laughs> I'm still waiting for calendar like that. You could kind of see what everybody else is doing. <laughs> yeah. So I only like now. So like tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific time. So kind of about the same time. Uh, VT. So if somebody wants to join that one, I guess message me and then I will just reroute all of the information about that call to you. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's the call he mentioned. He, he said there might be an external call where you can get feedback, but yeah. yeah. No, I can ask him. Um, also, just to answer your question, Christine, I think um, I dropped out uh, when you guys were talking about the use cases, but I think it would be it would be very helpful, at least for your team's use case, of how you would integrate it into your uh, workflow. Would uh, help us um, actually okay. make the thing. Yeah. I would say in the meantime, uh, what I can do is is sort of write up a notebook that demonstrates the use of Pandastic Search. So like people are using pandas anyway, so I, I will try to write up a guide of 
Um, like for example, I want to know all of the uh, proteins that are mentioned in papers that also have the word heart in them or something. So um, I can write that up tomorrow um, and sort of distribute that and see, see if anybody bites, if anybody thinks that that's really useful um, or not. Yeah, that would be like yeah. a really good kind of test in the waters case, right? Just to kind of gouge, is it the right move forward or not? So. I yeah. would say that you just uh, share notebook. Okay, so I will do that. Um, if any team leaders are on this call or if anybody's in the team leaders uh, channel, uh, let them know that they can have their teams. Uh, if anybody's interested in writing up like how they would, uh, if they want to actually, let's do a call. If anybody wants to join a call to talk about how they would use a search engine, whether it would be helpful, if they really want one, then they should be on that call. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll schedule it for maybe like Monday or something. Yeah. So yeah, probably it's a good idea to get a, like one representative from each team to participate mm -hmm. in this who are like tech oriented, like, you know, who are like all into this. What type of API could we use to kind of solve a problem? You know, those type of individuals. Right. That yeah. would be, be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. So the next call for us would be tomorrow, the same time. It's okay for everyone. So tomorrow again, 11 a.m. I have a talk with like call with Dan. Yeah, at, we started now at 10. Uh, 30. Past, yeah. Okay. So again, let's let's do 10 30 and then I will just kind of jump on the next okay, one. 10 30. Okay, 10:30. Let's okay. do it. Pacific time. Okay. So. Cool. No, sorry uh, for using on. just my time zone, like being selfish. But no, no, just I, I actually I, I'm in Central Europe time zone, but I, for last two weeks I switched already to yeah. Pacific time so Yeah, we love working at nine p.m. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so great. Uh, I put this uh, uh, recording on on you. I mean, I send it to 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 Arthur, and um, uh, we're going to continue. <laughs> Uh, this uh, all, all the points in in agenda because I think it's just the beginning. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. we, we cover with 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 chance to cover I think just the first two points, and still there's many question marks. So uh, yeah, it's a, a lot of things to to discuss. Uh, also about semantic search because I think uh, Imran you wanted to talk about it, but uh, yeah, I mean like we can keep. Uh, talking on Slack or later on okay. tomorrow. Because I think that you invested already some time in, in your face, uh, Docker, yes? That's yeah, you, you have Annoy ready though, right? Sorry? Do you have, because Annoy, from what I've researched, Annoy is very similar to face, right? Yeah, I mean like similar and not similar. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I mean actually, in terms of functionality, it's the same. I mean, the same story. You have vectors and you want to find uh, nearest neighbors or the, the most similar vectors. So th that's the whole story. Okay. Yeah, yeah uh, we'll discuss it uh, offline and uh, yeah, yeah. Put, your, so, put your code in the repo too as well. Yeah. Yeah, so actually like I, I would still love to continue that conversation, not outside of this type of calls, but still together, at yeah. least for okay. now. Because right now, like today, we covered our like elastic search engine type of, right? What is it about? Yeah. But yeah. all of the rest, I think it's still part of the same conversation. We just run out of time. Yeah, so let's sure. do it okay. tomorrow. And okay. uh, like, we would love to hear what's, what's on that end. And uh, keep, uh, keep giving, uh, please keep giving your notices or remarks on, on the, this doc, uh, on the Google doc so that we can, uh, because in two or three days we will go, uh, we are going to forget about things that we, we discussed now, so, uh, so that we can uh, keep the track, the, the record track of everything, so, so mm -hmm. that in two weeks that uh, it doesn't turn out that uh, actually something that should, be, should have been done isn't done because it, will, it has been discussed, but actually not properly uh, addressed and uh, distributed among uh, people. Okay. Yeah. Think, yeah. What you can do also to upload this video and to recognize this speech recognition engine from Google. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> well, actually, you can get that up in an running an hour, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> an hour and ten minutes. 
So, okay, uh, guys. Uh, okay, I, I'm closing this session <laughs> officially. Uh, okay. So, uh, have a nice day or night or evening or morning, whatever. Uh, so, and we uh, hear us tomorrow. At uh, ten past, uh, I think it is ten thirty uh, Pacific time, uh, and uh, we we uh, text uh, us uh, on the Slack. So so simple. Mm -hmm. isn't it? Okay, uh, great. It was great. I mean, uh, it's it's amazing uh, yeah. what we are doing here. Uh, so once again, thank you, and uh, see you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye